We frequently get asked here uh, questions at BEMA, whether it's in person while we're on the road or doing speaking engagements or via email. There's a common conversation that revolves around um, our different forms of fellowship and oftentimes we'll, we'll experience maybe a, more, uh, maybe a more rigid commitment or conviction to belief systems or we might find ourselves in expressions of the Christian faith that, 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 that really come down on unless you believe this, unless you are on this, like unless you do things the way that we do things, whether it's about you know, this particular rite or sacrament or that expression or this core belief or this form of orthodoxy, you know, you're not, and it always gets connected to you're not saved, whether that's stated directly or implied or just something that you pick up. And sometimes this is the personality of our leaders, for better or for worse. Like sometimes we just have very um, uh, fiery, prophetic voices that that like to speak. Um, maybe at times they might even, oh, I've been guilty of this throughout my career, to, you over-exaggerate for the, for the purpose of clarity. And, and sometimes it just ends up, especially when you start to build on it, and it's not just, you know, one, but it becomes this larger system of thought. It becomes a culture. Um, sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's not necessarily the denomination or the faith expression or the tradition. It's the way that this particular person or this group of people is leading this particular, you know, this smaller context. And, and, and there's a lot of things, I'm not, that's not what this video is about. Um, but behind that often sits this insecurity that we have about like, so what are the things that I have to believe? And is this the right practice? And can, can I do that sacrament this way? And if I don't, like what's, what's going to happen? And, and do I go to hell? And, and what just raises all of these other insecurities. And sometimes people aren't necessarily struggling with the insecurity, but that that conversation just raises a whole nother conversation of, so so what are the list of essential things? Um, and I won't be doing that in this YouTube video. I won't be giving you the list of essential things because that's not my place. And frankly, it's not your place and it's not your pastor's place, and it's not your denomination's place to decide those things on that level and on that scale. Like our leaderships, our, our traditions, our denominations, it is their job entrusted to them by God to figure out what we do within the context of those traditions, of those expressions, of those denominations. How do, how do we, in our corner of the Christian world, how do we, what is our conviction here? How do we live this out? What does that look like? That, that's totally appropriate. To understand how we, in our tradition, in our faith expression, in our corner, in our denomination, how we're going to, that's totally appropriate. Where it gets weird is where we start to assume that we are the only ones in the larger conversation that have it correct. And everybody else is wrong. And everybody else has given in to false teaching. And it can get really weird. And it can go so far as to people really quite literally believing that this is the only group that is actually right enough that they're going to make it. And, and, and so this is just a video to remind us that that's not how it works. That's not how it works. We're just hired hands, all of us. It doesn't matter if you're a podcast host or a leader of a denomination or a priest or a pastor or an elder or it doesn't like we're, we're all just this is never our thing. It's not the kingdom of me. It's not our kingdom, it's God's kingdom. He's always been king. He's always insisted on that kingship. And uh, he, he doesn't give it away to us. So we're stewards. Like, we're, we're stewards. And whenever we kind of forget that, we start to build these systems that, that do all the... It, it heaps on the insecurity and the judgment and the guilt it, completely inappropriately. It... It starts to usurp power that's not ours. The kingdom of God is about following Jesus. I, I, I don't believe that, that the doors to heaven swing open because we pass 
a theology test at the end. I don't think that's what the Bible teaches me. I don't think that's what I'm invited to believe. So, so we're, we're, we're probably not going to spend, like, what we want to do is avoid this desire we have to define and create the, well, at least we know, here's what we know. We know that this is about following Jesus. We know that Jesus is Lord. And we know that it's God's kingdom, that Jesus is king in this kingdom. That's what we know. That's what we know. It's his kingdom. He gets to make those decisions. He told us not to do the weeding. He told us not to separate the weeds and the wheat. That was his job. He'd, he'd save that for himself and his angels. So we're told to follow Jesus. And and that's really it. Like I, I love to tell people, my list, my list... My, and, and this isn't even a list that I get to, I don't even get to hold this list with authority. This is just my list. My list is Jesus and the Bible. That's it. If Jesus is my Lord and the Bible is my authority, if I believe the scripture is what God's given us to, to, help, to help us understand the way, and I believe Jesus is Lord, uh, everything else for me and yes, that, we're going to immediately have to figure out how we apply that. And you're going to have an expression and I'm going to have an expression. We're all going to have the, all that stuff is not avoidable. Like it's unavoidable. We're going to have our theologies. But that's what matters to me. Are you following Jesus? Is, is the scripture your guide? Then we're okay. Run hard after Jesus. Because at the end of the day, he's the one. He's the one. That will say, I knew you, or I didn't know you. It's Jesus. He's the one that will make those calls. Not me, not you, not I, not the denominational headquarters, not your pastor, not your elder board. At the end of this whole thing, at the end of this race, it won't be them that you answer to. It will be Jesus. So we follow Jesus to the best of our ability. We wrestle with theology. We deconstruct. We reconstruct. Uh, we do our best. We run hard. And these things should be central to any healthy, uh, any healthy spiritual family, any healthy fellowship. And none of them are going to be perfect. When I say healthy, I don't mean perfect. I mean healthy. They will all be imperfect, but a healthy fellowship is going to help you have things like the freedom to choose. Whenever you're a part of a group of people that don't let you choose, like, this is the only choice, and if it's not this, then you're out. You should probably be out. Because we've got to have the freedom to choose. Consent. Whenever groups of people, entire movements, try to take away your consent, and they'll do that with manipulation, which another word that I've been taught is the word clarity. Clarity. Like, healthy spiritual communities should be really clear. They should not be murky, like, ambiguous. And there's different kinds of ambiguity. But evangelical spaces have often been really good at kind of being ambiguous and kind of bait and switching. And the whole thing's kind of manipulative to get you to be the person they want you to be and go the way... Listen, it's the Spirit of God that will make us into the people we're supposed to be. Not our church. And, and while discipleship will be a part of that process, and hopefully that discipleship's happening through great spiritual leadership and, and biblical teaching and all those things, it's the Holy Spirit that will do that work. Not our faith tradition, not a... Like we create these kind of closed, manipulative systems. And when it starts to manipulate, when it starts to remove your ability to choose, when it starts to pull away your own personal autonomy and consent, when it's not clear... When it doesn't give you the choice to say yes or to say no, to willfully engage and be present or to step away when you need to, if those things aren't, uh, that, that, that is the, that's the soil in which we talk about abuse. Like that's, that's, that's more abusive community tribal structure. Healthy spiritual community should enable what we, what we often hear called human flourishing pointed towards Jesus, 
I'm not talking about humanistic human flourishing. I'm talking about Christ followers. I'm talking about Christ-centered flourishing. Should make us more like Jesus. And we should be free to become more like Jesus. We should be free. We should be free to resist Jesus. That's what a relationship with God's all about. And our communities should be the place that help us flourish and thrive by saying yes to Jesus. But our communities of faith should not try to manipulate us away from that autonomy and from that choice. It's a weird world that we create with our power structures and our different systems. And, and behind it all sits theology. Behind it all, behind that manipulation is usually a theology that says, well, unless you think this, unless you affirm those things, unless you do that thing this way, well, you're, you're out. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to leave your church. Maybe it does. But that's not my point. And that's not what I'm saying. My point is when you have this angst and when you're having that wrestling match, you should know that, yeah, that wrestling match is worth having. You should know that there's, there's validity in those hunches that you have. The, that thing that's making you ask that question, like, this doesn't quite feel right, but I'm not really sure what the answer is, and I don't know what I would say back to them. And Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your spirit is bearing witness. Your conscience is testifying to the fact that something is just a little dissonant, maybe a lot dissonant, with what God's designed shalom to look like. So anyway... Just some thoughts. When it comes to those rigid community structures or, or unbending belief systems, sometimes they're really helpful. Sometimes they help us. They give us guide rails and, and they give us a structure, an infrastructure to spiritually lean on and grow into. And it, so Even when they're uncomfortable. Just because they're uncomfortable doesn't mean they're abusive. Just because they're uncomfortable doesn't mean they're bad. Sometimes those uncomfortable systems can actually be super helpful. But they ought to be systems that we choose. They ought to be systems that we are, we are saying in our own free will and autonomy, we're saying yes to those things. And they're helping us become more like Jesus, not less. It should be leading to more love, more peace, more patience, more kindness, more goodness, more faithfulness, more self-control. If these communities and systems are leading, to, are, are leading to arrogance and envy and malice and debauchery and fits of rage, and Paul said that's the fruit of the flesh. So these healthy spiritual should be leading in that direction. So if you're coming away going like, okay, but now I need to know like what the list of things are. A, I don't think that list necessarily exists. And B, I don't think you, no, I don't think you do. I think you need to know enough to say yes to Jesus, to follow after Jesus, and help others follow after Jesus, and to look for others who are helping you follow after Jesus. Do that. Do more of that. And when the community around you and the people around you are simply not letting you do that, simply not helping you run after Jesus, do whatever you need to do to run after Jesus, because Jesus is the point. He will always be the point. And we do need to do that with other people. We, we will have a hard time running after Jesus on our own, unfortunately. Um, but we ought to be able to find communities that help us say yes to that and lean into that and to do that with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our might. So those are my thoughts on, on those questions that come in. Sorry, yet another frequently asked video where Marty never answered the question. Yes, another one of those. We'll see what happens in the next frequently asked question video. See if we answer any questions there. We'll see you then.